morning, everyone. You know, sometimes I feel like with this issue of marijuana and then the debate we're having that we're living in, not 2019, uh, but 1919, uh, with the debate with tobacco in 1919. You know, in 1919, we knew we were beginning to get the studies showing tobacco caused lung cancer, that it had a host of negative harms, uh, and it was a drug that and plant that had been used for thousands of years, but it had only recently become harmful because the advent of a new industry. In that case, it was an industry that invented the automatic cigarette making machine and changed the whole infrastructure of what tobacco was because of technology. Uh, we ended up having zero deaths due to tobacco before 1900 to now 420,000 a year last year, more incidence of lung cancer last year than even 20 years ago because lung cancer takes a while. It's the single most preventable death we have in the world. And we have that because of this massive industry that has profited off of addiction. And we are recreating that nightmare right now with this discussion of marijuana legalization. We've set up a false dichotomy that you either have to criminalize people and throw them in prison and give them a criminal record, uh, give them fines that add up and target the most vulnerable with the criminal justice system, or you have to legalize marijuana. And I don't buy into that false dichotomy. I think that, that there are many, many smarter things we can do that do not create a 21st century big tobacco 2.0, but that also stop criminalizing people and saddling them with criminal records. I wish my friend Mitch Earlywine represented the reality of the industry in New York State. I really do. Um, because him and his friends at Normal, I think, started out on the decriminalization side, which I can agree with. But it has completely changed now, the discussion, to the commercialization of marijuana and this new industry. Uh, John Boehner and his friends just hired 20 lobbyists in Washington, D.C. The Cannabis Trade Federation has 15, and Brownstein Hyatt, the most um, illustrious K Street firm in Washington, also has a dozen or so marijuana industry lobbyists. So for them, this is about money. So it shouldn't surprise you to learn that Philip Morris has now invested over a billion dollars in the marijuana industry. It shouldn't surprise you to know that the head of former president of Purdue Pharma, and, and those of us in New York saw the demonstration at the Guggenheim last weekend where the hundreds of thousands of prescriptions to protest the Sackler family, which was the family behind Purdue Pharma, that that occurred. But the former president of Purdue Pharma has less, have left Purdue Pharma and is now the president of a marijuana company and started his own. Folks, we are being bamboozled all over again by an industry that has put more pot shops in Colorado than McDonald's and Starbucks combined, that is breeding THC products now that do not represent Woodstock, and it was nice to pass that sign on my way here up from the city. Uh, marijuana is not Woodstock anymore, it's Wall Street. It is not uh, Berkeley, and I can say that because I'm a graduate of the University of California, Berkeley. It is not Berkeley anymore, it's Silicon Valley. It's our friends at Stanford and in the Silicon Valley an hour south of us who are laughing all the way to the bank. We should not arrest and criminalize people. We don't need to have, we can fix the decriminalization law here. We don't need to be, and we should not saddle them. We should absolutely do research. We should absolutely research the medical value, but do not conflate medical marijuana and the proper use of marijuana's components as medicine with decriminalization, which is about social justice, which as, a pre as President Obama's senior drug policy advisor for two and a half years, I can tell you I care about. Got to also say it's the ultimate irony that John Boehner is pushing for marijuana. He blocked every single criminal justice reform we tried to get through in 2009. So that's just the extra irony for me. And then conflating it again with full legalization, which is commercialization. The folks writing this bill, and beyond writing this bill, I think there are a lot of well-intentioned people who support this in New York right now, but they're not going to be around in 10 years when there are the dozens of lobbyists from the marijuana industry who try and tear down every single regulation. I wish we could listen to Mitch Earlywine and cap THC content. No state's ever done it. I wish we could listen to other people and focus on only social justice. Do you really think that the inner city is going to benefit from this? They're going to be the ones opening the major marijuana farms and stores? Folks, you need $10 million to just walk into the room right now to even get – forget about if you want to give them a license. It's not just a license. You need tens of millions to start a successful marijuana company. Do you think that the kid in uh, uh, Brooklyn and kid in Queens is going to compete with Philip Morris on that front? We're, we're kidding ourselves if we think that. 
But we do know that this is gonna disproportionately hurt people of color. Because I'll tell you, if a cop wants to arrest you and give you a record, maybe he can't do it for marijuana if it's legal, but they'll find 23 other reasons uh, uh, to do it if you believe that's gonna happen. So I, we're trying to say, and this, and I know time's up, but I wanna make one final point. This was, um, you know, a pipe dream, if I can, no pun intended. A, a month ago, we were kicked out of the rooms across the street. People said it's done, it's in the budget, it's a done deal. Well, a month later, we see that it's not a done deal. We see that it is going slower. We're arguing to go slow, figure this out. No state in the country has legalized marijuana via legislature. Please remember that. Only states with ballot initiatives financed by the pot industry have passed retail legalization. In Vermont, they did legislature, but it was possession only. They did not do retail. No state has done it. I know as New Yorkers, and, and, and I love to th think this too, now that I'm a New Yorker of the last five years, I, love, I know that we like to say that we can sort of do it better than anyone else and we'll be the one state that figures it out. On this one, I have a lot of skepticism because of the interests of the industry. So let's go slow. Let's learn what has happened in the other states. Let's fix social justice on its own merits and medical marijuana on its own merits and not think that we're gonna be able to pull a fast one on the dozens of lobbyists and special interests who stand to make a ton of money with this today's very high potent THC. Thank you.